What's up guys, I'm Dr. Silas and I'm from Nepal. I'm back here again with another video for you guys. This video will be regarding the mistakes that I did during my first application cycle of my USMLE. I wanted to bring this video out long time ago but uh, it was not possible because of some reasons. Finally we are here. Let's talk about the mistakes that I did and I think this video will be helpful for you because these are the common mistakes that everyone does. So the first mistake was not giving proper time for CV and the personal statement. I could not give much time for these two documents because I only started uh, preparing for these documents after I completed my step exam which was in August 24 and the deadline was September 28th so there was no enough time. What I suggest you guys to do is start it before uh, two or three months to prepare for your personal statement and CV. Uh, so that you will get enough of time for those to review and also prepare other documents like uh, letter of recommendations and uh, MSP as well. Alright, let's talk about my second mistake and this mistake is again related to my CV and it is the clinical gap that was present in my CV. It was during my second cycle this happened. Thankfully I got masked but there was a mistake and I don't want you guys to make this same mistake. So don't try to mention any uh, clinical gaps if you have any clinical gap then try to find out a good answer to explain it I had an answer for it and I said it when one of my program directors asked and it was I was preparing for my documents first thing uh, for my application and the second thing was I was also writing the case report and was also involved in a lot of other researches as well so try not to mention the clinical gaps as, as much as possible so that was my second mistake let's talk about the third mistake I had a good number of calls and uh, I thought that this number of calls would be enough for me to get matched so I would not bother to do any other extra burden of work like writing the case reports or getting involved in all the meta-analysis kind of things or systematic reviews but that was a mistake. I should have written the case reports. It helps in a lot of ways. I'll talk about how uh, subsequently but you have to write case reports and try to do the meta-analysis as well if possible. I have not done one, I have only done the systematic review and also uh, observational like cross-sectional study and also a lot of other case reports as well. It is very important to get uh, case reports because during your interview you have to talk about a lot of cases and uh, writing case report will help you to organize all of your answers the cases that you are going to talk in your interview so case reports are very important to build confidence and to present yourself in your interview and also they see the resources as well so that is a plus point for you so try to write case report as much as possible let's talk about my next mistake and this mistake was not doing any observership it was during covid time and that is why i could not go to the united states for in-person in, um, observership or extensive and I thought doing any tele rotation would not help me much and that is why I did not do any tele rotation but there was a mistake I should have done tele rotation and uh, it would have helped me in a lot of ways like uh, how to communicate in a better way with people like in front of a screen how to engage them making the eye, proper eye contact that is very important and tele rotation could have taught me that if you are in united states please do the observership or extensive wherever it is available it is very important for your communication skills my next mistake was not trying to find any mentor during my first application cycle i thought i could do it by myself and uh, i did not find anyone for the help i did not try to find anyone for the help actually and uh, that was one of the mistakes and in, during my second application cycle I tried to connect as much as many people as possible like from seniors to professionals um, however my seniors helped me a lot that's why I did not go with the professional I think there are many professionals who could help you who could ment uh, like, uh, give mentorship to you one of them is USML Sathi uh, I think they provide uh, the mentorship for people if they try to connect to them so you can go for that but at least make uh, make someone your mentor, professional mentor, so that they can help you, so that you will be in the right track. The last mistake that I made was regarding my communication skills, and I did not practice much during my first application cycle, and this was the major reason that I did not get matched. So I don't want you guys to make the same mistake 
and what I would suggest you to do is first try to talk to your friends like try practicing interview with your friends and then if you are comfortable enough to practice with your friends then try to find people who are in, in like in Twitter try communicating with them and practice it with them it is really very helpful for you lastly if you are in the United States try to find an extensive where you can talk to patients directly this will improve your communication skills in a natural way and uh, that will help you to talk to the program directors and interviewers and it will help you of course to impress them as well so those were the mistakes that I made during my uh, first application cycle and I hope you guys don't make the same mistakes and uh, get matched in 2024 good luck for you guys and don't forget to subscribe my channel so that uh, you won't miss out any other tips I will be providing in next video